This is called a boss, a shifter boss, but we don't have to worry about that because why do you need a shifter when there's nothing to shift? <laughs> This bike is called the Peugeot PE25. See? I wrote it on my hand so I wouldn't forget. The seat angle is really weird. Let me fix it. There, that's better. I couldn't figure out what year this bike was from, but let's say it's somewhere between 1959 and 1969, maybe. Although I don't really think it matters how old it is because Peugeot graphics never get old. So, starting in the cockpit area, we have an ATAC stem, which is really cool because it's like hollow in the back. And then we got this belt. I'll ring that in a second up close. There's a lot of noise, so I don't know if you'll hear this, but. Did you hear it? I heard it. Now, while we're up top, let's look at these crazy brake levers, which are like two piece brake levers that have exposed cable and an exposed nut. And then these grips, which just look awful, uncomfortable and dirty. Oh well. Now back to that seat that I was complaining about before. I have more reasons to complain because it's like totally ripped off in the front, which really, really sucks. It's a seat by Wrights. It's kind of like a Brooks, except it's a Wrights and it's ripped up. It's so sad. This bike has what's called a mixed frame and it's a really swoopy mixed frame. It's not all straight and angular, it just kind of swoops right up to the head tube. And speaking of the head tube, which will make no sense if the last clip came out blurry and I decided not to use it, but here's the head tube lug, which kind of reminds me of like an Atari game because it's all blocky, but then here it's all uh, angular. So that is a really cool lug and it's painted black and it's kind of rusty, which is right up my alley. Now just below the head tube, you have a bunch of cool stuff. You have this fork graphic, which is all rusty, and I love that. And then a brake, which is a center pole brake made out of steel, and I'll look at that in more detail in a second. Here's your fender, which I think is made out of steel, and your headlight, which doesn't work because there's no generator. And the front tire is like kind of this knobby gravel tire, and it's got a Presta tube in the rigid rim. Here's a pretty cool shot of the bike from the back. Now going way down low, here's a shot of this chain guard. It's like a half chain guard, because the frame really can't accommodate a full chain guard. And here's that chain guard a little bit closer. And of course, the best part of the chain guard is that really, really cool logo. Let's look at this back hub a little bit. This is by Atom, and it's an alloy hub, and it's a single speed with an axle and no quick release. And when I say no quick release, I haven't forgotten about these wing nuts by Hure, which uh, apparently are dangerous, so they're not legal anymore. But they were legal when this bike was made. Your guess is as good as mine on this thing. It's marked Anti-Vol Nyman, and it flips up. I don't know why. I don't know what you're supposed to put in the frame there. It's kind of weird. Here's that front brake that I was talking about earlier. I figured it was going to be a Mafac, but it's labeled Peugeot right there. Peugeot. See? Right there, Peugeot. And another thing that says Peugeot is the head tube decal. Look at my fake gimbal. I'm just holding a tripod. See, it's all shaky. Sorry, I'm low tech. The front hub is also by Adam, and it has really neat brazons where you don't put a bolt or a screw in it, you put this little rod and clevis thing. And now the sunlight is just right so I can get you a shot of the logo on the seat, which says Wrights. Get it? Right? So right here is where the generator used to be, and it's not there now, but I almost think that's cooler than having a generator. Just two bare wires. The pedals down here are by Leotard, and the Leotard logo is upside down, so you can't really read it. But I'll give you a moment or two to flip your computer monitor or your phone upside down, and then you can read it. Okay. Um, the pedals are a little bit small for my big feet, but they're kind of cool. And do they spin well? They spin just fine. Honestly, I totally just forgot about the brazons on the fork, but here's the stunning conclusion of how the rod is attached to the fender. And you can also see 
how deteriorated this tire is, which I've seen on a million Schwinn Continentals, but never on a Peugeot. And the side of the rim is like really cool. Look at that. And speaking of rims, we got Rigida Crolux in a 26 by one and a half by one and three eighths, 650B. That's a lot of numbers, and I'm sure it means something to somebody. Not to me. Maybe to Sheldon Brown. Rest in peace. And since this bike only has one speed but is also a freewheel, which means it doesn't have a coaster brake, it's a good idea to have front and rear brakes. And here's the rear brake. And look, I'll squeeze the lever. Isn't that exciting? I don't know, it's exciting to me. I was gonna tell you all about the rear reflector on this fender, but it's not a reflector, it's a light. There's a little light bulb in there. It doesn't work because there's no generator, but it's a light. That's so cool. And it's got a reflector on it too, but it's a light and a reflector. And right here is the spot where the wire goes through the rear fender so that it can power the light back there. And looking at wires going through rear fenders always reminds me of the lovely bicycle blog. And come on, you gotta admit, you totally have a crush on Valoria. I do. Everybody does. With their little knitted socks and stuff. Come on. Here's another gratuitous shot of the head tube with both lugs, not just one. Isn't that awesome? And here's the factory cable dangler. There's no locking headset like on those mountain bikes I looked at a little while back, but I don't think I'd really expect that on a bike like this. It's a French bike, it's an old bike. They didn't have locking headsets back then, I think. And if you're gonna be cycling through France, you need somewhere to put your luggage, like on this luggage rack. I know here in America it's called luggage, but in France they pronounce words a little differently, so it's luggage. And no offense to ratrodbikes.com, because it's a great site, check it out, but I'm not a huge fan of the worm's eye view, like this view of the underside of this seat, but at least it shows you the underside of the seat, so there's that. So, if you thought the cable routing for the rear light was kind of cool, the routing for the front light is even more cool. It starts here at the generator, then it goes through one, two, three clips, then it goes through one, two, three, four more clips on the chainstay, and then it goes through one, two, three, four more clips until it goes all the way up to the fork right here, and then it goes into the fender right here underneath the brake. And then it comes out of the fender right here and goes into the light right here. The sun is totally going down in Newburgh, so I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly. Now, you may have noticed that the back tire is flat. It's a Dunlop tire, but even those go flat. But if you were on a cycling tour through the French countryside, or the English countryside, like Mr. Pither, you wouldn't have to worry about flats because right here and right here, you have little brackets so you can put a pump on your bike and blow up your tire when it goes flat. I just had a chat with your dad. And right here is the fork logo. I wouldn't call it a logo, it's more of a graphic. And this is on the left side of the fork that isn't all worn off, so you can get a better look at it. It's like a lion and an arrow and some black and white stripes. It's really super cool. So I know I said earlier that I don't really like the worm's eye view, but I'm shooting this one for a reason. Because right up there, in the middle, you can see the moon. Yeah. The moon's coming out over Newburgh, and it's kind of getting squirrely down here. Like, real sketchy. So, before the werewolves come out, I think I'm going to call it. And that is the Peugeot PE25 factory single-speed mixed -E road bike, circa 50s or 60s, here in the beautiful city of Newburgh, New York. Thanks for watching. <laughs>